What's going on guys? So someone in the lifestyle design community mentioned to me that I no longer do like the presentation style YouTube videos um, like I used to because like for a while I went through a little phase where I used to create like small presentations and then like film YouTube videos like this. No longer do that. Someone told me so you know you got to give the people what they want. So I thought you know what this actually ties in perfectly with the type of video I want to do today anyway. So might as well create a quick presentation and as you can see from the title of the presentation it's about finding the perfect clients for your social media marketing agency. What type of client to work with and the reason why I want to discuss this today is because every client is different and I've been doing this for three years now guys. I you know, sometimes you'll land a client, you'll be excited about it, and you'll realize that the client itself is really difficult to work with. You know, they'll be very demanding. Um, you know, this could be anything from the, 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 the type of business it is, the situation that they're in. It could be cultural differences. You know, we've had the, the strangest amount of clients over the past few years. We've even had a client that um, we got into a big discussion slash argument with because around Christmas time we put up like a Christmas type of advertisement this client was from uh, the Arab Emirates I think if I'm not mistaken and uh, basically he was very very strict with um, like religious type posts and you know he considered uh, Christmas to be a Christian um, like you know Christian type post so um, you know, he said, I forbid it. I do not want any Christmas type uh, advertisements, posts, etc., of my uh, company and business. So we ran like a little Christmas discount, which we immediately stopped. And uh, well, it's fair to say that after that, the relationship wasn't the same ever again. Um, so, like I said, guys, you know, even though this client paid us really, really well, the relationship didn't last. And, you know, in the end, it just fell apart. And you'll also notice that when working with social media marketing clients, you'll notice that 80% of your time will be spent on 20% of the clients and vice versa. So um, like two of our highest paying clients are clients that we actually do not speak to. Um, we send them, like it's getting to the point where we're actually getting a bit, uh, not necessarily scared, but you know we are proactively trying to strike up a conversation with this client because he's literally leaving us to it. Um, he's paying us every single month and he's happy with the results. When we do finally speak, he is positive. But 99% of the time, we do not speak to this guy and um, it's great to work this way. Um, you know, if we ask him questions, he will reply, obviously. You know, if you ask for an additional discount code, he gives us it right away. But other than that, this guy does not ask questions. He is far too busy running, uh, you know, his other businesses and uh, working on the business rather than inside the business, micromanaging everything we do. Um, but as, as, uh, as you can see here, this is Pareto's law for those that don't know. 80% of the effort will be spent on 20% of the clients. And I've noticed it myself, you know, some of our low paying clients actually demand the most amount of time. You know, we've got a client that messages us every single day. Yes, this client is a little bit older. Um, she's actually, you know, she's over 60, has her own information product, uh, which is going really, really well. But basically because it's all new and she's not familiar with it, um, you know, she is trying to understand it all, which, you know, it, it's understandable, obviously, but she asks us questions every single day. And yes, we do have to answer those questions because, again, you know, she is a relatively uh, high paying client. But, you know, as, as you can see, as you can see here, you know, you will notice that this is true. OK, you will spend a lot of time on the smaller clients or a small amount of clients and then um, basically 20% of your efforts will be keeping the, the higher paying clients happy. And basically this just, you know, it, it's it's about the type of client it is and, you know, what type of business it is, where they are in their, like, business stage, you know, in their business, um, what you call it, you know, what phase their business is in. So I just thought I'd quickly create a presentation and just give you guys some pointers, some tips on what to watch out for, what to look out for and... Uh, you know, what clients or businesses to just avoid altogether. So obviously the good clients are the ones that are easy to get results for and require a minimal amount of time. Now, I understand this goes without saying, but if you think about these two points every single time you go into a meeting, you'll notice that more often than not, you'll try and make it fit. You'll try and make it work, even though you know beforehand that, this client's going to require a lot of time 
or this client is going to be difficult to get results for. For example, when starting out, um, a, a book author came to me and we were on a meeting. Basically, this client had a very small budget. It was $750 um, and this was it. Like That was literally his entire budget. Um, my retainer at the time was $1,000, um, but you know, I, I said, I'm willing to do it for $750. I said, what is your ad budget for it? He said, well, that is literally my entire budget. I said, okay, well, what else can we you know, try and gather together? You know, for the ad budget, um, he said he could do ten dollars a day. So again, you know, we we got off on the wrong foot. You know, um, it wasn't a good fit, and I should have seen it from you know from day one. But I was in that scarcity mindset. I really wanted another client. You know, I wanted. I think we were just below six figures at the time, and I wanted to hit the six figure mark again because we hit six figures. Six figures. We lost a client, and I, I just wanted to get back up there again. You know, just to. Um, maintain the sort of six figure status which you know in essence it's just a it's a mind mindset thing basically you know it's not not special um so i really tried to make it work and you know it didn't work after month one um, and like side note this author was promoting his books on um amazon and his commission per book i'm sorry i'll just turn this off quickly and um, his his commission per book was three dollars um, and for that was for ebooks, and then I think it was six dollars for his actual physical uh, paperback book. So uh, minimal budget, minimal ad spend. He wanted to drive Facebook traffic to Amazon, and his commission per book sale was very small as well. So this client was hard to get results for, and he also required a lot of time for me because I had to be very creative in trying to get cheap traffic onto Amazon, try and get a lot of sales with a minimal budget. And this client was also email, emailing me every single evening um, with, basically I said to him, you know, just send me details because I can't see Amazon. So I said, you know, send me over details of the sales, etc., so I can get a bit of an indication of, you know, what I'm doing. Um, because obviously you can't install the Facebook pixel on Amazon. Um, so he sent me an email every single evening with the results, with the sales that, that he was not getting basically and questions about like, what is going wrong, can I change this, can I change the copy and then in the end he just said, you know what, I'll do it myself and that is where the, the sort of like the, the client relationship ended. He paid for one month, so he paid the 750 I um, suggested I do an additional two weeks uh, free of charge you know, to salvage the relationship a bit, but again, that was the scarcity mindset. I should have known from moment one that this was not a good fit. So what are the bad clients? Well, that is a prime example of one, um, but two other things you need to look out for are startups with no proven sales. These are very recognizable by the fact that they'll ask you to do some kind of revenue share or they'll say you can become part of the business, you can buy shares into the business, etc. Avoid these type of clients at all costs or struggling businesses. So businesses that are basically on the downfall, they aren't getting sales, the product isn't selling, etc. And, you know, let's face it, all, all of us, when we go into a conversation like that or a meeting, we immediately think, okay, how can I try and help this client? That's just because that's just in our, you know, our good nature, but it's very, very hard to do that with a struggling business because basically everything is going downhill. The sales are, uh, aren't as good, the product isn't selling, there's a negative vibe around the business and you know this is sort of like one last gasp, you know, trying to uh, salvage the business with social media marketing and we immediately think how great would it be if I was the hero of this business and I helped this business get back up to where it belongs. But especially when starting out and even now, like these are businesses that I avoid at all costs and these are businesses that you should avoid as well because it will have a negative impact on your reputation. It will have a negative impact on your um, like self-confidence and it will just have a negative impact on the way you th you perceive social media marketing because you immediately conclude that all businesses are going to be like this, they're going to be a pain to work with, etc., and it's just not true, okay? So these two types of clients you should avoid at all costs, and obviously the perfect clients are those um, that have business owners with a fast response time, so business owners that are proactive. If you ask questions, they answer immediately. Also, what you need to look out for are 
businesses with good reviews online. And yes, this is actually something that I check. So I was working or almost worked with, um, I, I can't actually mention the name or anything like that because I signed a non-disclosure agreement. But uh, basically this client was based in the UK and they were going through a sort of brand name slash name change and I asked them why they said it was basically just for like uh, reputation purposes. Uh, they were getting very bad reviews, etc., online, and they knew that the business was good. There was just like a few people in that that this is this was their story. There was a few people that tried to ruin it, you know, for the rest because they had a bad experience, and they wanted everyone to know that you know that they had a bad experience. Therefore, the business was bad. You know, like the the Karen type of people that uh, have to complain about everything. And I, I I got the idea that it wasn't necessarily the business that was that bad, but they had so many negative reviews online that it's just gonna be very, very difficult to help them with social media marketing. Why? Because if you start running ads, people are gonna see the bad reviews and not gonna click on the ads. They're gonna basically just scroll through the reviews and see what people are saying. Then they're gonna post negative reviews as well and it's just gonna spiral from there. So make sure you find clients that have good reviews or have a lot of positive uh, five-star reviews, etc. online. Then thirdly, profitable businesses that want to scale further. So these are businesses that have been able to prove that the, the product sells, you know, it's going well, and they just want to tap into new revenue streams with uh, Facebook and Instagram advertisements. So these are perfect clients to look out for. And lastly, businesses that understand the need for digital marketing. So these are businesses that you basically don't need to, to pitch. You don't need to sell social media to them. All you need to do is um, sell them on the idea that you are the person, you know, the right fit for this. Um, and obviously this this goes without saying, but um, you know, it's also vice versa. So they also need to prove to you that they, they are a good client to work with. It's not just you trying to prove to them that that you are um, you know the right person for it. If you don't feel like it's a right fit or if you don't feel that um, you know the client is a good fit for you or your business or you know where you are moving forward, then just don't take the client on. You know, definitely like, you need to understand that there's so many clients out there, there's so many businesses getting started each and every um, you know day. Obviously, don't go for the start of businesses, but you know these businesses are maturing, they're, they're getting sales, etc., and then further down the line, you can work with these people. So you know, make sure that. It's not just you pitching. It, they also need to prove themselves to you. And uh, like I said here, guys, like guys, people that understand social media marketing, it's just a much easier relationship because if they are skeptical about digital marketing, social media marketing from day one, and they still you know, try and work with you, they are just going to be looking and judging every single move you make. And as soon as you take, like, you, you take a wrong step or you do something wrong, then immediately they just... Uh, draw the conclusion again that social media marketing is bad and they'll just you know cut you off immediately so make sure you find businesses that understand you know i think nowadays most of the businesses understand that social media marketing is essential for um you know growth and moving forward we know a few years back this wasn't so much um this wasn't the case as much whereas now it, it is people are slowly catching on so anyway guys i hope you got some out of this uh, oh no hang on i've still got another slide for you guys so bonus slide client examples um these are clients that you can get leads for so uh when you're starting out i you know i recommend focusing on uh lead gen clients rather than um, you know web shops and e-commerce why because lead gen clients are just easier to get results for they'll boost your confidence it'll boost your portfolio it'll boost your experience and then you know over time you can look into web shops and e-commerce etc which are great clients to have because it's very very easily scalable so like i say you know guys everything from gyms to high-end restaurants you can get leads for and all you need to do is either set up the lead ads in Facebook or create a quick landing page with ClickFunnels, for example, and you know get them to book um, a free call or get them to redeem a coupon, etc. cetera. And um, you know, if you can find a client that is basically in, in, in this list and that also has a business owner with a fast response time, good reviews online, and it's a profitable business that wants to scale further 
and they understand the need for digital marketing, you have a perfect client, and then all you need to do is pitch your service, get them, get results, and you'll notice that life will be so much easier from then onwards because you're not messing around with bad fit clients and clients that just don't really understand the need to social media marketing. Okay, guys, I am, um, yeah, I'm very confident that was the last slide, so I'm going to wrap this video up here. Like this video if you got something out of it. For those that want to know more about social media marketing, I have a free mini course inside the uh, Lifestyle Design community, which is a free uh, group. So if you request access to that, you immediately get access to the mini course. Basically, the mini course is the Upwork a funnel so I show you how to get onto Upwork, get your account approved, um, get clients through Upwork and then also build out your team with freelancers. So if that's something that you are interested in, definitely request access to that. It's the first link in the description box down below. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you guys in the next one.